Good evening, everybody. James Beach from Northwest Metal Works Music and Books. Back here again for a the next episode of our Northwest Hard Rock and Heavy Metal Alphabet. Um, this is Letter C, and uh, I was going to talk about a few bands that we included in our book, Rusted Metal. It's a ref huge reference guide to the scene. Um, and uh, I'm just going to talk about the bands I have props for as I've been doing, because then I don't have anything to show if I don't have them. So, um, so I'll talk about a few, mention a few other honorable mentions kind of thing, and and uh, at least give you a good taste of some bands that some you'll probably know and some maybe not so much. So, um, so first off, these guys were had a couple pretty big hits. This record was pretty popular of uh, 93 was Candlebox. Um, these guys were managed by Susan Silver, uh, discovered by her at least, uh, um, and uh, came a little bit later on the so-called grunge kind of thing, uh, definitely in the hard rock realm. Uh, like I said, a couple big radio hits, and um, this was their Breakout hit record, second one didn't do as well, that sort of thing. But they're back together in recent years and playing a lot of shows. Um, drummer comes from uh, one of the Battle of the Bands, Lake Hills Bands back in the day, played drums for a band that um, their apparent singer Paul Davidson was in called Realms. Um, a lot of people that were in the kind of alternative scenes later on definitely had roots in the metal or, or punk scenes prior to that. Um, one of the kind of forgotten heavier grunge bands, I like these guys a lot, was Coffin Break. Um, a couple re early records with Sub Pop and kind of split up, and so unfortunately before a lot of that broke, and they got pretty overlooked. It was a little single from, from Sub Pop's uh, release there. Um, we got a thrash metal band called Condemned um, from Seattle area, guys. This is a little promo. Uh, single that was kind of cool, had a little like kind of insert thing and stuff in it. Um, they had a basically one full length that was a half live, half studio release. Uh, so those guys were kind of cool. Um, these guys were a little more well known as they kind of toured around a little bit and kind of got some records out there. Uh, with they were on Medusa with uh, uh, through Anima, this is Coven. Um, they uh, this is their debut. Blessed is the Black it came out in '87. Everrat. Um, this was actually a sealed copy. I was kind enough. I always get uh, the one of the Coven guys kind enough to gift me, which was pretty cool. Um, also have uh, the original. Second album, Death Box Behind You, and a, re a co pretty cool reissue a few years back of their third album, Boneless Christian, has a bonus track. This came out a little later. The band had split up and then got back together with, this was four of the guys with a couple other guys kind of filling in. Um, and then uh, they're back in recent years playing shows as well. We're actually going to have a compilation track from them on the next uh, volume three Northwest Metalworks compilation that's in production, starting in production right now, so that's pretty cool. Um, uh, Portland band, um, alternative kind of heavier band called Cracker Bash that was pretty cool. Saw these guys at Satyricon, they were kind of fun. Um, let's see, what else did we have? Confused. So this was Duff Delgado's band, who was in Sacred Steel and Rough Justice, a couple metal bands in the 80s that um played a lot of shows uh rough justice was on um, one of the metal meltdown compilations that ever rat dave port now did um then uh he went he also was in recent years in palooka which was with a number of different um guys from the metal scene um paul passarelli was the vocalist for a good while that was in lipstick um uh, glenn logan was a founding member of the band in maine songwriters lead guitarist is from overlord um and jason Rivas from slaughterhouse five is drummer in the band so they're pretty cool um uh crawl 
which was Steve Van Lu's band in the 90s, early 90s. They did a couple tapes, played a lot of shows. Uh, kind of a bit more in the sort of the my eye direction, which was Steve and Kurt Bostrom's band, a little more um, uh, sort of an alternative thing, whereas Bible Stud was a bit more towards the Overlord kind of direction. Um, next day, I'll talk about a band that uh, was friends with the guitarist, Roger DiCarlo. Saw those guys play a few times, and um, here's a it's not the first demo tape, but the second one when they changed the lineup slightly. Um, from, this is from 86, which was pretty cool. Um, got an original copy signed by three of the four guys. Missing the singer on this one. This is the first release of Vengeance is Mine. It was a German release. Uh, came out a couple years after the tape actually did. It took them a little while to get this thing out. And, um, there are a couple records. Um, 88, 89 for the first and 90 for the second. And then it kind of split up for a bit, got back together for a year or so, recorded three new tracks and split up again. Uh, we did a reissue of their first record on Northwest Metalworks, different cover art that the that the guitarist wanted to use, um, but remastered sounds really good. Um, he'd actually, before that, he'd done a two-on-one himself with a friend, Jim Harris, and him kind of put this one out and we did a thousand or two of them, sold them out. It's kind of cool. Um, let's see. Well, these guys were kind of a cool, sort of, kind of a crossover deal, sort of, sort of in the Guns and Roses direction. Definitely a lot of Hanoi rocks and, um, you know, influence that sort of thing. Um, guys that kind of came from the punk scene and went a little more towards the hard rock metal. Um, this was their lone release. They had an earlier demo tape, um, and. Uh, this was on a uh, division of metal blade um that was a uh, no wonder was the offshoot so it's kind of a tough one to find a lot of times you see the record or cassette cd's pretty hard to find you can see it's got a little cut notch in the side um let's see what else do we have here so this is kind of a tough one to find crier this was Bill Durham's band, both before and after TKO. He was with these guys. They kind of reformed, and then in the 80s after he was out of TKO, and um, that's him on drums there. <laughs> and so it's kind of a pretty hard rock, sort of in the rail sort of realm. It's kind of an interesting one. That was pretty cool. Portland guys, Crisis. Um, this is the second pressing of the record. This was the original cover for the first. I did a little CD reissue, remastered with some liner notes and stuff, which was pretty cool a few years back. Um, this is the second pressing from 83. So these guys were two brothers, Tim and Gene Casey. Drummer uh, was Gene, and Tim was a guitarist and kind of main songwriter. And it kind of went through different singers and lineups. And I guess the story was they were already always fighting, and kind of <laughs> a lot of guys left because they... Uh, so they had, but they had actually, they had a tr track on the first KJON compilation in 1980 that Whiskey Stick was also on that we we put out. And um, these guys were borrowed money from, I guess, his dad, their dad, Tim told me, and put out this first record recorded at Recording Associates where Wild Dogs and a few other people recorded. Um, got this picked up by the Metal Gem Metalworks, which was their, um, you know, Ray, repressed rails record and a few others back in the day um, so that's kind of cool um let's see so of course these guys were pretty reasonably well known and pretty popular in the early 80s was culprit um this was their lone record on on shrapnel um they'd recorded some other tracks um couple years later to with Michael Fisher, Roger Fisher of Hearts Brother um, in their studio. Um, it was trying to help him get a record deal, but unfortunately it didn't happen. And um, Scott Earl, the bass player, and Chardon and Christofferson, the other guitarist, um, left to join TKO. And they tried to replace him for a little while longer, didn't really work so well. And eventually Jeff LaRue left and joined Mistrust. Um, so this is their one record. It's definitely considered a kind of a cult classic and um, um, pretty popular still. A lot of people still like this record. They're kind of an earlier pre-Metallica, uh, who they actually played with in San Francisco uh, for a show. 
Um, it was kind of in the speed metal, like Wild Dogs. They were sort of getting heavier and faster than Judas Priest and things like that at the time. So they were a little bit ahead of their time. Um, but then once some of the thrash speed metal guys came along, it was um, kind of passed them by. But um, this is a recent release. Was um, uh, uh, Lost Realm in Portugal put this out, which is a collection of some demos, which is um, th their first four demo songs from pre the first record was like around 81. Um, then it has the four tracks they recorded with Michael Fisher from 84, I believe. And then it has the players track that was on the US Metal 2 compilation. So it's pretty neat. This is a red vinyl one. He only did like 100, 100 of these. So uh, those sold pretty fast. And, um, did it on CD as well and black vinyl. So that's kind of cool. Um, Hellion Records actually did a reissue of the CD back 2000, 2001 range when they played around when they played um, the festival in Germany over there. Um, this one's kind of cool because it's got um, three live tracks from a reunion show in the late 90s. Um, it's also kind of a weird, like, red CD, which you don't see so often. So, yeah, so that's kind of neat. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so I always wanted to show some of the shows I went to in Portland, which we could talk about some of these bands, was um, I made this display for... Um, kind of our roving Northwest metal archives that we've done at our metal fests and sky river and a few different places. Some, um, go kind of put together Brian there and my label partner. And I have put together, uh, some of these shows and curated them with a lot of memorabilia, a lot of, you know, some of which was donated by various people, James Tolan and a lot of friends of ours gave us various flyers and, and memorabilia, to, you know, donated to the cause kind of thing when we were working on rusted metal and, We've we've incorporated that in there. So you can see I've got a Divine Right, Cruella Crimson Guard show. Um, I saw Crimson Guard was a, a formerly Stormtrooper, and they changed the name when they reformed. It kind of broke up for a little bit, reformed. Uh, my friend Jim Cunningham, I grew up with, is a year older than me. He was the singer for those guys and joined when he was like 16, um, replacing the original singer. And they're all kind of older guys, and they were really cool. Cruella would put them on a couple bills with them. Um, let's see if I can get you to see. So down to the bottom here, there is a, and I can't, <laughs> there it is right here. I'm, I'm opposite. But down in the corner is a metal ball that had Coven. It was the only time I ever saw Coven back in the day, the original lineup, and that was kind of cool. Um, got a Chemical Annihilation was another thrash band from Portland I saw. Dead Conspiracy and Crotch Rocket and Savior. That was a, that was a fun kind of thrash hardcore crossover type of show D D dead conspiracy were kind of an earlier death metal band we'll talk about them next though but um let's see what else did i have oh i wanted to mention um cool band out of idaho child's play which was um, a metal band kind of in the dock and rat sort of vein we're we're actually including a track from them on our on our next compilation as well which is pretty cool they were they were a pretty cool band they did one self-release record they actually recorded in seattle at a studio and then they put the record out themselves in idaho um pretty tough to find record definitely and um cypress was a washington thrash metal band that was pretty cool as well they were they were they were pretty uh did a couple demos tapes and kind of got around played a lot of shows and stuff um, so yeah so there's a few interesting ones i had a couple sort of non hard rock metal ones I wanted to mention that were still really cool bands we that, that both Brian and I like a lot. Um, Cowboys, which of course was a pretty popular band, much like the Heats and some of the other bands at the time, Allies that I mentioned before. Um, these guys were kind of considered like the Clash, Seattle's Clash sort of thing, where they, they definitely had the reggae and rude boy uh, stuff going quite well. Um, really popular with a lot of the bars and, and dance places and stuff and then this is my one humorous one is so this this is kind of a weird one that happened in the 70s and this is called kid blast but it's actually a band called chinook and they um chinook was kind of a pop you know it's a pop band rock band um 70s pretty popular doing a lot of the dances and things and um they had a you know, three or four singles back then including a pretty cool cover of of Lou Reed's rock and roll. Um, 
And then they got signed to Claridge, I think maybe for the last single. And they were going to do this full album. And the label wanted them to change their image and name. And they uh, had them take on this whole bad boy sort of thing. And there's some really goofy song names like Cocaine Cowboys and Gasoline Girls and Leather City USA and jack the ripper and do the hump and it's like they were trying to be punk although this was like 75 i think or 76 so pretty early music is definitely sounds like shit pop stuff that chinook did so it just changed the, the image to kind of be bad boys drinking and partying with the girls and these goofy and it just didn't fly at all but it's just such a weird goofy one from the northwest scene that it's always cracks me up every time i come across this record so so yeah so there you go um letter c um check out northwest metalworks music.com um we you know still have copies of the rusted metal paperbacks for sale if you want to check that out it spans 1970 to 1995 covers washington oregon um, idaho and british columbia we even touched on with a lot of the bands up there is kind of the whole circuit of of bands that toured and we're able to record in different places around here and so on and so forth. So till next week, take care.